Let's get started. I really want to I really want to kind of walk into this. We're going to be talking about the 2024 marketing blueprint. And I'm going to walk you through a blueprint of how to think about building your service business. And it's it's one that has served me well for the 30 years I've owned these cleaning service businesses. It's, it's something that if you kind of get your mind around, it, if you really understand where we're going with this, um, you're really, really, really going to see a lot of success in your business. It is the formulaic plan that is known to build million dollar cleaning service businesses. Welcome to the Carpet Cleaner Success Podcast. A show created to inspire carpet cleaning business owners to build their own thriving residential and commercial cleaning business. Your host, John Clendenning, has built and sold successful cleaning businesses for multiple six figures over his 30-year career and is the founder of Carpet Cleaner Marketing Masters, a digital agency that turns your online marketing into a lead generation machine. Tune in as John shares proven tips, strategies, and expert interviews to help fast track your success in the carpet cleaning industry. Let's kind of dive in and get it all together because it goes part and parcel with what we did last month about sort of really understanding how to set your goals and how to do your plan. And now this is more about putting that plan into action. So with that said, let's get into the presentation and we'll get things rocking. So we're unveiling that blueprint. That's what we're talking about here today. So obviously, as always, turn your cell phones off, turn your Facebook off. Um, If you're a cleaning or home service business owner, serious about growing. The next 60 minutes or so um, are going to be very, very helpful to to grow your business. So what we covered last training was setting your 2024 goals. We talked about the three fundamentals of marketing success. Um, We'll recap some of those during this, but we're really kind of moving on from this. But, you know, we're talking about the media, the market and the message. And then we how to optimize your website for conversion um, and and really, really get that dialed in because a pretty website does not cause people to reach out to you. There are very specific elements that need to be in a website that cause people to know, like and trust you on visual on and then even even other elements for them to reach out to you and stuff like that. So um, we talked about some of the latest trends and then developing that action plan. Stay to the end. We're going to have the resource kit available. Um, we gave that last month. There's a few extra things added to it. <clears throat> so you're going to want to stick around to the end to get this resource kit. All kinds of stuff about the website. Again, about low cost grassroots marketing ideas. I always say that everybody should be doing those all the time. You start with them. You never stop them. 27 years of owning my carpet cleaning business. Um, over five years owning a, a maid service, uh, working with franchise networks and and starting up a flood fl- restoration franchise, um, being involved in the startup of them that grew to about $150 million a year before they got bought out by Bell for things like that. It's grassroots never really stops. And there's a reason for that. We'll talk a touch a little bit on it. We've done a training in November all about grassroots marketing as well. And um, we've got some coaching programs coming up for people that may not even be clients of ours uh, that we're gonna be talking about in the new year where we start retraining back on this grassroots stuff and some of this other blueprint stuff as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, So our our, our clients know a little bit about that already, but people that aren't clients, we're thinking of, we're planning on opening that up to the market as well um, with some options there to kind of get into the coaching. um, Even if you already got all your marketing services and digital services handled by somebody else. So who am I? For the newbies on the call, John Clendenning. um, Started my first business in 1990 uh, while I was still in high school. Uh, window cleaning business because I wrote a business plan on it with my buddy Scott and took it to the bank manager for extra credit marks. If you've heard the story before, um, you know, you can pause or you know take a sip of your coffee while I tell it. But um, we ended up getting the loan, bought vans and ladders. And for the next um, several years, ran a window cleaning company till he went off to college and um, started doing high rise window cleaning and realized one in 10 fell to their death and said, OK, no, 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 not interested in that. And started cleaning um doing a janitorial night cleaning. And and by my early 20s, mid 20s, I built up crews and did all of that kind of stuff. Ended up in carpet cleaning uh, as a, you know, kind of sold off the the janitorial thing, did carpet cleaning. And that kind of went all the way through to about two years, two and a half years ago, when I finally sold my last brick and mortar business. And in the meantime, did a lot of lecturing and consulting, taught at three-day elite retreats, even on the island of Samoa. I got flown in to teach carpet cleaners from around the world how to 
do some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. It was one of our blueprint first first ever blueprint trainings. That was 2010, um, but did a bunch of consulting and stuff like that as well while still running my businesses. Um, started in a town of about 30,000 people. Did in 1995 my the, the carpet cleaning business. Did 100, just over 100,000, almost 120 thousand dollars year one before the days of the internet and no yellow page presence and a town I just moved to by starting to learn that and in my early 20s and being painfully shy. So a whole bunch of things against me, but kind of moved to a new town where the only people I knew was my sister and brother-in-law, rented a broom closet out of my brother-in-law's computer store, started a carpet cleaning business. Um, so so yeah, um, done all of it. Um, you can get it on Amazon, but, uh, wrote the book, The Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Carpet Cleaners and have built um, tested and proven systems that help cleaning businesses grow. More importantly, we help cleaning businesses grow. So these are clients and customers and people that have used our systems um, and and help them solidify the business that they want, whether it's multi-trucks and not being in, in the truck. I was in the truck for about the first two years, haven't cleaned a carpet since, well, other than maybe helping the crew when somebody's sick or in the, in the back shop doing area rugs since about 1997, 98. I think it was the last time I actually went out on a day-to-day -day job. And uh, yeah, I just uh, decided I wanted, I realized, not just decided, but realized I needed to work on the business more than working in the business. So I was able to take that couple of years, learn marketing, start transitioning out, hiring people as we grew and gave myself more time to do what I should be doing as the entrepreneur of the business in a town of 30,000 people, and then bought an existing business um, about a town away that was maybe doing about 100,000 a year. Uh, went back to the bank, went back to the bank manager, different one this time with a really good business plan because I learned how to write it in high school and got a loan and bought the other guys out, two brothers that were in fighting and we ended up with their equipment and their uh, and stuff like that. And uh, didn't realize how bad their business actually was when we bought it, but bought it and built it up. And that became business number two of three or four that we bought out to build the, the cleaning business as well as we grew. So we grew by acquisition and just by buying databases and stuff like that from other cleaners going out of business. And we grew by expanding territory. So um, I read Clean Facts magazine, still got cases and cases. I was laughing to, with Jeff Cross the other day, um, who's he's the, you know, editor and media director of ISSA, the association for our industry. Um, and also ISSA owns Clean Facts magazine and cleaning and maintenance magazine and all of that kind of stuff. And I was telling about the stacks and stacks I still have on our mezzanine here in the office of all the clean facts I ever had, all the people I learned from Howard Partridges, Dusty Roberts, Mark Sager, Joe Polish, you name all those guys. Um, it's kind of neat now to be in the magazine and in the books and on a, a monthly um, call with Jeff teaching, helping to teach people uh, in the industry all about the, th the stuff that kind of learned and adapted and changed and modified over the years. So, and we'll talk a little bit about that stuff here today. So what do we do? We, we help make our clients the top carpet cleaning or cleaning brands in their local marketplace. So they attract the best clients. They are able to charge top rates and they're booked out for weeks in advance. That's ultimately the goal is you want to be the, the you know, as Grant Cardone has said, whether you like him or hate him, whether you find him too brass or you're, he's right up your alley, Grant Cardone is right when he says it's better to be the best known than the best. So let kind of let that thing sink in for a minute because um, the best known is the one that gets called. It's the one that's got name recognition. It's the it's 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 the um, Kleenex brand of your local marketplace. That you know, think of it that way. Um, not paper tissue. We go buy a Kleenex. It might be a no name brand, but it's Kleenex. You know, and think of all the different products that we have in different businesses and things that we know. You know, back in the day, people used to talk about hoovering their carpets, right? It's it's kind of a you know a little bit of a, a an older person's term now, but oh, we're going to hoover the carpets. Well. Hoover was because it was, you know, it was the Hoover vacuum cleaner was was the prominent known vacuum cleaner, right? We don't say we're going to dice on our carpets now, but, you know, think of that in the day where those those name brands, well, that's best known, doesn't have to be the best. Um, how do we do this? Leverage the three core marketing principles of digital marketing and just general marketing success. You always want to be thinking, how can I maximize the opportunities to generate an ideal lead. If I was going to add a little word in here, it's ideal. And some of our other slides show the word ideal because, you know, you can generate a lead, but if they're not ideal, you know, then, then, you know, that's, 
they may come back around. There may be ways to automate and nurture them over time, but the ideal leads are the ones ready to buy from you. You want to maximize your brand impressions so that again, those ideal leads already start to know, like, and trust you. So there's a way to use your, your branding uh, to really build the and captivate your audience again a lot of carpet cleaners just go hey i, I know how to clean carpets or i'm going to learn how to clean carpets just let me start you know start up a blue collar business kind of idea i did the exact same thing when i realized i don't know what i don't know i had to start learning all the, the pieces and quickly realized if i want to be a carpet cleaner i'm going to go work for somebody else because the owner of a business is actually the person that needs to market the business. They don't have to do the marketing, but they have to know how to market and set up a different message and build a team around that mess and, and build a company. Even if you're a company of one, you have to know how to stand out against the, the, everybody else in the marketplace, or you might as well just try and be the cheapest. You're 99, next guy comes in at 89, next guy comes in at 79. He's going to go bankrupt and his truck's going to fall, fall apart full of holes and rust. But now are you going to go 69? Like, you know, or can you sell those, you know, a similar type of service for 300 bucks. We've got clients that their minimum charge is 250, 350 in that range. And they've got competitors at $89 and they're not in, you know, LA and stuff like that. They've just built a better message and a better system. So, and you want to maximize your conversions. You got to think about this as well, because um, you can, you can have a lot of opportunities. You can have a lot of brand impressions, but if you don't know how to convert them, say for every 10 leads, you convert one or two into a customer because you're just not good at it. You just don't know what that means. Like not just the first time they call, but how do you chase them? How do you follow up with the ones that, you know, aren't interested right now, but they're interested, just not right now. Nobody ever follows up with them a week, two month, two, three, six months, nine months, 12 months later. Hey, did you like the last guy? You know, you reached out to us a year ago. It's time for your car. If you got it clean, then it's time to get it cleaned again. You know, maybe you didn't like the last guy. Worth giving us a try. We've been in your inbox for the last year right? Those kinds of, you, you can do conversions better than everybody else. And you don't need as many opportunities and you don't actually even need as many brand impressions. So it's, it's these big levers you can pull more opportunities, more brand impressions for, for being the best known cleaner, and then more conversions. And you're just stacking your, it's, it's not little increments of ones and twos. You're doubling. If you double your conversions, you double the size of your business with the same amount of opportunities. So kind of that's why we talk about the three core principles there. So think about that. So what's the hardest part about marketing carpet cleaning business? Online, offline, don't really care. Too many options. We all know it. I don't care if it was back in 20 or two, 2002 when, yeah, you had your yellow pages. You didn't have the internet yet, but you had the yellow pages. That was sort of a cold place that people would go look if they didn't have a name to know or you weren't marketing well, but you also had all the other places, the flyers, the newspapers, the um, Val packs, the, you know, community newsletters and uh, millions of places. There's always a direct mail in the mailbox and referral partners. And like, there's just too many and you're unclear where to spend your budget, right? Probably don't even know what your budget should be. So online, you've got SEO, pay-per-click, website, social. That's a few top ones. But I would tell you right now, even on top of that, there is dozens and dozens of layers below that. Like think of things like Nextdoor and and Yelp. Do you be on it as a directory? Do you do you want to be paid to advertise on there? Can you can you track that to know that that's helping you at all or not? Uh, you know, Judy's book, Angie's List and, and those better business bureaus, I can help you at all. Um, you know, those kinds of decisions all the way through all have costs. So it's a major investment. And marketing is an investment. It's not an expense. You're never going to get to the day where you don't have, you don't need to invest in the marketing. So you might get lucky. You might have a lot of clients in your database. How are you going to get them to come back? You need to invest in marketing and reaching out to them so that they rebook with you. You need to continue to nurture and build a fence around them so they don't leave you and get attracted away by the competitor. You got to keep reminding them why they chose you. People forget, you know, over time. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're building, you're building that fence. That's investing as well. You want people to refer you. So, you, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that, but that's part of our grassroots as well. Every carpet cleaner needs to have all these referral partners and needs to have an active marketing approach to reach out to the potential referral partners because that's the one-to-many marketing, right? One-to-one -one marketing is, hey, is Mrs. Jones ready to get her carpets clean? And is she going to choose me or one of the other guys? And, you know, 
do I canvas the whole neighborhood or 50,000 flyers to get five phone calls or 50 phone calls, right? Who's ready to clean right now? And are they going to pick me if I have the right message, right? That's an investment. But if you can reach out to somebody who can send you one, two, five, 10, 15, 20 leads a month who are interested in your services and pre-positioned to buy because the other person talked about you, that's a brilliant thing as well. So that's an investment. You always have to be investing in marketing. Um, if you don't know where the money's like, what's to show for it, like how much are you paying and to where, to what platforms, what is the platform designed to do? And is it showing its return on investment? So if you don't know if it is or isn't, again, that's a whole, uh, like a whole nother, a whole nother problem that you need to be concerned with. So it's a fail if you don't know, if you don't have a clear plan, because you could overspend um, or or worse, underspend. That sounds weird, but overspending is often better than underspending um, in marketing if, if at least the avenue and the vehicle is getting you some omnipresence. Um, we have a lot of conversations with some of our clients and stuff like that and, and, and other people we talk to in the industry. As an example, um, some things used to work even, even in digital marketing a few years ago, that seemed to be a little bit more challenging now, uh, or they seem to, you know, the quality of the lead may not be as strong as somebody would want. Um, an example that comes to mind would be like Facebook, right? You, you run ads on Facebook. You shouldn't just be running offer ads because you're just going to get discount people, but you should be doing a blend of different types of ads, talking about your founder's story. We'll talk a little bit about that, talking about your differences, talking about your customers, and really building a brand in front of the ideal target audience. Uh, and some of them, and and offer ads in the mix and it's it's a cycle and in the mix some of them will reach out to you and want to know more information now you disrupted them from looking at aunt martha's dinner that she had last night and what you know you know uh their their best friend's cat just did today you know and and you just disrupted them with an ad in their news feed right done well it should look like um, something that was natively in their news feed and not an ad generally but you just disrupted them you, they didn't go typing in carpet cleaner near me in Facebook, you know, no, none of that happened. So, so you, you, you disrupted them. Now you're influencing them a bit. Some will reach out to you. Some of those will book right now because they're just interested and you're good at conversions. Those two come together. More will book if you're good at conversions, but they'll reach out. You have a conversation and you'll end up with some bookings on the back side of all of that. You've now built a list. You're starting to build of people that are interested in carpet cleaning services, maybe not interested right now. They're interested, but they don't know how to shop in the category. They need to be educated. They think carpet cleaning should be cheap. So they all sound like discount shoppers. When you need to teach them with nurture and outreach, the difference between a discount carpet cleaner and a professional carpet cleaner. Now, you may, you may be best aligned as a discount carpet cleaner. Um, they say of an email or a text message or a video on your website telling them this, you may be more aligned as a discount because you you rent the property, you don't you don't own the carpet, but do you own your own upholstery? Do you, do you own your own area rugs? Um, are you trying to maintain it? Do you want it to be maintained in a healthy manner? Do you want it to be cleaned with a discount provider that uses soaps and detergents that leave a sticky film and within a month the carpet looks just as bad as it did before well wouldn't that be a waste of your money so you can teach people how to shop in your category and be able to sort of elevate them in the the type of client they become most people don't know what they don't know until they know it and you have to be the one that lets them know it now they have a different perception and they might come back around try somebody else and go you know what that didn't that guy was right that didn't work out at all Three months, six months later, they come back around. So one of it is building a list. The other one is the impressions of the ideal customer seeing you, uh, because in in places like Facebook, Facebook is has a demographic equal to our our, our ideal residential customer, thirty five to fifty five year old, mostly aligned with women um, in in that platform, more so than men, anyway, skewed higher um, and, and and very social. That is our ideal demographic. They're there. If you can put your founder's story in front of them for 10 or 20 bucks a day and build a list of 10,000, 15, 20,000 people that see you every single month that is that ideal demographic, you know, not the 12 year old kid, not the 90 year old granny, but literally that group. And that's what you can do on Facebook is you can really dial in audience as well. You, does it matter that you landed three or four jobs that paid for the cost of the ad? Like 20 bucks a day, is 600 bucks a month. 
two jobs, you paid for it. Three jobs, you paid the technician to go do it for you and paid for it all. And you got seen by 16,000 local people this month, next month, next month. And you start building that brand awareness over time. Back in the days of flyer marketing, we used to know that it would take anywhere from seven to 10 months before a flyer would pop in the exact same neighborhood. As long as it broke even to pay the costs, maybe even at a slight loss, I built up entire marketplaces by running running outreach and mail campaigns at a loss because the clients we did get, we get repeats and referrals next year, but also we're getting an awareness. And I knew that we're gonna be sitting there eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months before it would just pop and we became the known, the best known, best known, best known. and. Just with, again, with flyers and mailings and different pieces of mail showing up at doorsteps mm -hmm. on, in the ideal neighborhood where we wanted to be. So same idea. So yeah, so underspending is worse than overspending. Sorry for the little rant there. Um, you guys can download the workbook um, if you weren't on last month's call, carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash 2024 dash workbook, 2024 workbook. Um, you can go download that. It actually is in the group of stuff that we're giving at the end of this, I believe as well. Uh, but either way, you can you can get a copy of that. And um, some of this stuff that we're talking about here, setting goals and planning and stuff, some of the stuff we talked about last month is all included in the workbook. So what's the opportunity? Well, with a clear plan of, you, you know, you can have your goals, your targets, and your key performance indicators, the key numbers that you need um, figured out. You can know you can generate enough inquiries. Let's not call them leads. Let's call them inquiries because you know, lead sounds like we're buying leads. Oh, you got you know, I, I need to go buy more leads. No, no, you need qualified inquiries from the internet, from referrals, from referral partners, from past clients, from client reactivation campaigns. You need enough inquiries to hit your goal and grow your business. So you need to need to know what that goal is. And you have to have a great return on your investment. So you need to be able to track all of that. Right. And what we're going to adding this month. So we talked a little bit about that last month, but you know, there's a blueprint for this. The master plan for running a systemized carpet cleaning and home service business that again taught to I taught to uh to around the world. I have taught on stages in Vegas and Chilliwack, BC and um Miami and I guess it's Samoa and Australia and stuff like that. This exact plan looks like this. Right. And it's th there are components about it that we're going to break down a little bit here. Right. So and we'll talk a little bit more about this as well. But step one is you need to set your clear goals. Right. So we talked about the fact that you could be in a sailboat, really have a really great plan to sail, you know, from from Miami to Jamaica. You got a great plan. You got no wind in your sails. Now, what are you going to do You're in a row? Like you can't go anywhere. Right. Clear goals, put the wind in the sails. You now have a direction. You now have something that you can use and work with to push you. Now, does it mean that you're going straight in a beeline? No, let's think of boats. Like you tack this way. Oh, come back, tack this way. Oh, come back, tack this way. So you're adjusting as you go to the market conditions, to your competitors, to anything going on, right? Like you're adjusting the plan as it's moving. You know, think of the stock market. It's not always up and to the right. It goes up. Oh, it dropped. It goes up. I'm into crypto very heavily, have been since 2013. So um, I'm one of these weirdos that bought a Bitcoin when it was uh, 150 bucks. So um, and 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 lost a bunch of Bitcoin in the middle and 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 other cryptos and stuff like that. I watched the market just swing wildly. I'm loving the fact that more and more and more institutions are coming in because it stabilizes the swings. Right. So you don't go up one day you know, and then down the next, but, and that's even when we're, we learn to set goals in our business and we learn to aim at something, they start off swinging wide, wildly. And then it just, you start dialing it in and it becomes very, very predictable year after year. Um, so what are your goals for 2024? Success is goals. All else is commentary. You can talk about it, but if you haven't written it down, haven't thought about it, hadn't got a headache and taken your Advil or your Tylenol and go, okay, let me get back at this again and made your plan you don't have goals. You have dreams. You have commentary. So let's get that in place. Goal setting is a framework, right? You need to have smart goals. So specific, measurable, achievable. Don't, oh, I do 150,000 this year. And by the end of 2024, I want to do 2 million. I'm not the one to say it's not achievable. 
you know, I'm five foot six. I am not about to play for the Denver Nuggets. There's no way around it, right? So there's got to be a bit of achievable. Like, yeah, was there a Muggsy Bogues once and stuff like that in the NBA? Oh my gosh, yes, there was. But rare, it's got to be achievable. So what is achievable? Like you got to kind of think that through and be a little bit, you know, you know, stretch goals are good, but unrealistic gets you off the mark quicker than anything else. You Like you just, you don't have the motivation to keep going forward. It's got to be a relevant goal. You don't want to have a goal that is unrelated to to where you want to take the company. So you want to make sure it's smart or specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, time-based. You want to know that in one month, I'm going to have these, these letters written, these programs in place. The, 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 I, always, I always think in my brain in good, better, best. I'm going to get the good out the door. I'm going to you know take massive, imperfect action. Don't go ready, aim, aim, aim. Oh, my real home. No, it's just getting aim. Aim, oh, oh, sweaty hands. Nope. Aim, aim, and never fire. Why not do this? Ready, fire. Oh, that missed. Aim, fire. Oh, uh, oh, closer. Oh, there we go. Now I hit it. Right. So, ready, fire, aim is much more makes much more sense. So you want to know, hey, what am I going to get done in the first month? What what am I trying to achieve in the quarter? You can't do everything, and it'll become overwhelming. So chunk it. Right. Set deadlines. One year, quarterly, ninety day sprints. Our brain works really well in ninety day sprints, Um, and we kind of pause and need to regroup anyways. And then the monthly goals to get us to the 90 day sprint and the 90 day sprint is on track to achieve the annual goal. So what are the things that you can do over the next 90 days? Big rocks they're called. Um, and what are the little things that you can do to get the big rock taken care of? And how, what are those big rocks that aim at the overarching goal, right? So, um, if you don't know the story of rocks, hopefully most of you know the story of big rocks, little rocks, but, um, as the story goes, um, a teacher sat there with a bunch of jars or uh, buckets, um, rocks, pebbles, sand, water, um, and said, and, and a beaker and said, we need to get all of these in the beaker. What do you guys want to do? And oh, pour the water in, pour the sand in, made mud, pour the pebbles in. Rocks had nowhere to go. He goes, yeah. But so they don't fit. They won't fit. No, watch this. Pour the big rocks in first. Pour the pebbles in and shook to move them all around. Pour the sand in, shook it, and let let it all sift through. And then pour the glass of water on top. So it all fits fine. Just got to put your big rocks in first. So you always have to be targeting the big rocks. Um, You must have a stopping point. So again, the beginning and the end of each year is a great stopping point to reflect. How did you do? It's not going to be perfect. Life is not perfect. How did you do? Did you beat some of your goals and not make some of the other ones? What are you going to do to go forward? That's the plan. So let's talk about revenue before we move into some of the other topics here, right? Um, So what is your revenue target? This is a a really good, obviously, in business, number of customers. End of the day, what do we really want? We want revenue. We want profit. um, We want to grow the company, right? So revenue allows us down the road to sell the company for multiples um, and make a good income. You know, we're going to start looking at profit margins and things like that as we go. We're business owners, right? But right. But if that big, hairy, audacious goal at the end of it is revenue and we're doing 250,000 right now and we'd love to end the year at 400,000 and we think that's that's reasonable, right? That's a relevant goal because we got some ideas and we know new territory, new this. I know how long it takes to develop. Yeah, I want to be on track or at the least by the end of the year, I want to be. I want to have a $400,000 a year business. So I want a run rate, a monthly rate that over the next year is definitely 400,000. And then we can up it from there, right? So you can, what is your revenue target, right? How much is that monthly? How many jobs will it require? And what is your average job value, right? So these are some levers we can think about as well. So, you know, last month we had a different set of numbers in here. I thought I'd change it for this month to give a different context for people that maybe aren't running their own numbers. You want to do 350,000 a year, right? Two trucks on the road. One and a half trucks if you're, you know, and growing kind of idea. Maybe two technicians, you work on the business, not in the business. That would be a good a good point right there, right? How much is that monthly? It's 29000 right? Plus plus change, but it's 29000 a month. If your average job is $325, you need 90 jobs. Now you know. That's super simple. We now know how many jobs we need. Wow, that's amazing. What are some of the levers you can pull? Can you up your average job? Then you'll need less jobs right? Can you get more than 90? Then you'll get, you know, it, 
with that, you'll actually beat this goal. But there's ways to play. Now you've got some numbers to think about and play with, right? If you don't know your average job, your average residential job, and it's not a guess, it is actually Service Monster, Marquette, um, House Call Pros, a spreadsheet, QuickBooks. How many jobs did I do last month? Divided by how many jobs I did last month, the revenue. So how much revenue I make last month? Divided by how many jobs I did last month. Pretty simple math, right? So you're going to figure out, and that should be something you track on a regular basis. Do you want to break down commercial versus residential? I suggest you do. But if you do mostly residential, maybe commercial just kind of factors in there, right? So think of it that way. But what is your average job value, and what can you do about it, right? So what is your average conversion rate? from inquiry to booked job. Are you even tracking this? Not a guess again. Anytime I ask my, how many, what's your average booking rate? Oh, like 70, 80% I'm amazing. Take them on as a client, start listening to every single call, tracking it. Did you know you're 35%? Could you get better? Like, can we can get some scripting, some languaging, um, some sales training, some objection handling, can you get better? Like, you know, we'd like to see up at around six, 60%, 50, 50, 60%, right? Um, realistically, right? We're not talking about the repeat customers who just call and book or log in and book. We're not, you know, referrals, 90% chance they're going to book unless you screw it up because they got referred, right? There's there's something already there. But the people that don't know you, right? They they haven't tried you before. They've seen your marketing. If it done is done well, it should pre-position them to make it easier to book. And now your scripts have to match what they see. You have to have a coherent company. Again, it's, some people say, well, we're just, we're just carpet cleaners, John, or we're just maid services. We're just home service businesses. We're just pressure washers. What it's, it's business. You're, you're now the owner of a business you run in this. Well, you re, you can sell it off, retire. You can have somebody else run it for you and go fishing. That's the dream of owning a business. You don't need to be slugging it out and then have a bad back, take a week, two, three weeks off and make zero money. You can build a business that builds the lifestyle that you're looking to do. That's why we all did this or because there's too many headaches owning a business that you don't have as an employee if you really don't want the end game of owning a business, right? Or what it can achieve for you. So end in mind, let's achieve that. Let's get down that road. So let's divide our job inquiry target per month by the rate, 50%. That 90 leads or 90 jobs that we need at 325 to hit our 350,000 a year. We only book 50%. Now we know we need 180 inquiries, right? So what are your goals? What do you want to hit? What is your, what is your um, average uh, job? If you don't know, great. If you do know, if it's 425 bucks, if it's $367 last month, what did it average over last year? Is there anything you're going to, can you, can you tweak numbers for next year as your goal saying, you know what, I think I've got some selling strategies in the home. I can teach our technicians some scripts, better scripts in the home to upsell and do stuff like that. We can raise our prices a little bit because of the, you know, the way we market is better and, and we can, we can still get, raise our prices by 10% and not lose very many jobs. You'd actually have to lose about 37% of your business. If you raise your prices by 10% before the profit drops below where your profit is right now, because that 10% is all profit, unless you add more money or more expenses to the business. So there's a bunch of stuff there, but yeah, you, there's lots of things you can do once you know those numbers and how many inquiries do you need? So knowing your numbers and putting it all together, right? So if you sat now go, okay, where's my leads coming from then? I don't have enough leads to meet that goal I want to hit, right? I can move a little bit. I can move from, you know, 325 to $375 an average job over the next couple of months with a bunch of things I'm kind of thinking about and learning and talking to other guys and whatever, but that's not going to get me there. How am I going to get there? So now you need to make a plan to fill in your gaps. And what do I mean by gaps? Um, your ideal target customer is no longer in one place. You must have an all-in perspective with your marketing. You must be omnipresent. You must be the best known cleaner and at least have that as a plan to grow towards, right? For your ideal customer. You don't need to be the best known cleaner to a three-year-old, you know, or a, you know, a 90 year old, um, you know, lovely grandmother living in an old folks home. You don't need to be the best known cleaner to her, but you need to be the best known cleaner to your ideal target avatar, which is 35 to 55 skewed most more towards women than men, um, college and university educated business owner, 
works in corporate, works in medical, you know, career oriented person with kids and dogs. And, you know, you need to be the best known cleaner service provider in your local marketplace to them. Now you don't have a price problem as well. So where do you get that? Well, neighborhoods, like they live in the same places. You're in cleaning one house, yard signs, door hangers, all of that fun stuff that we all know about. A-frames at the end of the street pointing down when the crew's there, lovely signed vans and stuff like that really stand out, thrown through the car wash every single day, never, because that is marketing. Your van being clean and tidy and not rusty is telling a different story than your van being muddy, dirty, and rusty. Different story attracts different people and attracts the, the right story attracts more of them. So think of your brand messaging as well. Your website, right? Your website should be built to convert. It should be ranking. So that's the SEO part of it. You should be doing like ranking in today's day and age is content. You need content out on the internet. So you need to be ranking the website with at least a blog post a week. Um, press releases help, all kinds of stuff, links pointing back, all that, because you want your website to be seen by everybody searching for any one of those search terms over time. And it just grows and grows and grows and compounds month after month, year after year, and you just become best known and it becomes one of your strongest assets. Paid search, you turn it on, you show up today, right? Now, some people go, oh, paid search doesn't work for me. They're, they're all tire kickers. You've got an issue. You've got a conversion issue. You solve the conversion issue, you, you can spend more and more and more money. If you can convert a caller into a customer better than your competitors, you can spend more money on your marketing than your competitors. If you're booking six out of every 10 phone calls that come in, regardless of where, who they are, and they're booking two or one, maybe they don't even answer the phone and they're driving down the road and the cell phone's ringing and the coffee's spilling and they're, or they're standing in front of Mrs. Jones and they're like, right? There's no business building happening there. They're, 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 they're hoping and praying, right? You have a plan in place and you convert higher you're now you're now the guy, right? So now you've you've now your revenue is so much higher than theirs. You can re, you can put a lot more of it back into your marketing, right? There's a percentage you should be putting into your marketing. So the more revenue you make, the more you, in, you can invest in your marketing. Again, two hundred thousand dollars a year, you should be investing about twenty percent, forty forty thousand dollars into your marketing, all in vans, uniforms, um, taking the real estate agent out for lunch your internet marketing, your flyers, your door hangers, your all of that, like all of the plan in place. And I'll show you what that plan looks like, um, right? But if that grew you from 200,000 to 300,000, you now got 60 grand, 300,000 to half a million. You've now got 100,000, right? 20% of half a million is 100,000 bucks. A million dollars, right? You've now got 200,000 right? To market. That's drive time radios. That's more omnipresence. Why do you think businesses start showing up around in other places? The smart ones, the 1% that actually get it, do all of this stuff, right? Direct mail, emails, video, radio, social media, JV partners. We talked about you need referral partners out in the marketplace, right? So you have to have an all-in perspective. So where do the jobs come from? It looks like this. Now, this is just an overview of about 40 places. Our grassroots marketing goes deep on this, but there's others as well. And some of these have layers, right? Google has pay-per-click, it's got local service ads, it's got the display network, right? Facebook's got Facebook ads, it's got contests that you can run, there is boosted posts that you can do around, you know, some omnipresent stuff, like all of them can go deep, but you need to have jobs coming in. If you could take this every single month and go, yep, yep, few from there, I got three or four from there, I got four, th Bing, yeah, Bing sent me two last month, yep, Facebook, oh yeah, I got seven, um, seven jobs and about 40 leads from there. So I'm building my lead database and jobs, like we talked about earlier. Instagram, yeah, I did a couple of reels and got some, you know, got shared out. YouTube, you know, ran ads against them. Google Maps, oh gosh, yeah, I got 30 leads last month and, and booked 29 of, or 25 of them, whatever, reasonable numbers, right? Organic rankings, yep, my organic. And you can track these and you know, and you can come down this entire list and check all of these off. You know that you're growing your business. And can you do that? This month or next month? No, we need a 90 day plan. Which ones are the most important? Let's put some big rocks in place, right? For the next 90 days. Annual plan is to take the business from 200 to 300,000, right? Okay, how am I gonna get there? That's that's the next, you know, what is what are those numbers? Work them backwards. Okay, where am I currently getting leads from? What are some of the gaps I can fill? Which ones do I wanna target for the next three months, right? Set a realistic budget. So we've got this spreadsheet here. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going into it. You guys can go and look at it. I was gonna spend a few minutes on it this, this month, but I got so many other things I wanna kind of point you at that you can just log in. It's again, carpetcleanermarketmaster.com 2024-2024-worksheet. 
So the other one was called workbook. This one's worksheet. You can log in, put your goal in there, put your average job, have it break down how many jobs you need, put your estimated conversion rate, play with this number and find out how many actual inquiries, still called it leads there, I'll probably update that, um, inquiries you need to come in to meet that to meet that annual goal. And then what's your average cost per, per lead source? Go to the second tab at the bottom. You're gonna need to make a copy of this so it's yours. You don't wanna change numbers. Every, this is a public document here. So you won't be allowed to kind of change numbers. You're just gonna make a copy of it. Um, and then you can just play with the numbers. The next tab over, you get to put all your marketing sources and how much it costs to generate an inquiry from those sources, right? So how much does it cost to generate an inquiry from your local service ads? How much does it cost to generate an inquiry from pay-per-click? How much, like those numbers you should know, where, where are leads coming from, right? How much do you pay for, you know, organic rankings of your website? How many, or, rank, how many, what's the number of leads that you get from there last year based divided by the amount you paid to rank your website? Uh, and there you go. That's how much it costs per inquiry, right? So you, these numbers are all known to us. It, like, again, Math wasn't my strongest suit in, in, in high school either. I didn't really like it. Maybe some of you on the call go, oh, I love math. Good for you. Do it. I didn't like it, but I love business. I love knowing how to fix problems and solve things. I decided to own businesses from high school onward, have not been employed by anybody in my life. I had to figure out math. I had to read some books on business numbers. I had to learn how to do a little bit of Excel spreadsheet and stuff like that. So, yeah. So think of it that way. Get get your get your pencils out and figure it out. This is where we really want to spend the focus, the remaining you know 15, 20 minutes of this call or so is really talking about the blueprint, right? So I wanted to make sure I have enough time to, to kind of go through this, right? So the blueprint starts off with a foundation. Every business has to have a foundation. You have to be able to answer the question to the customer in their mind and through your voice and through everything they see, why should I choose you over all these other choices? And if you go, guy, yeah, that's a good question. No freaking idea, I'm, I'm nice. Oh, we offer 100% money back guarantee? Well, this guy only offers 90%, 50%, what? You know, oh, we guarantee you're gonna be satisfied. I don't see on his web that he, website that he says, we, guarantee, we don't guarantee that you're satisfied, we're just gonna show up. Right. You guys all know the bad guys in town for sure, but they all look the same to the customer. Right. We all say, oh, customers just want the lowest price. No. Price is about fifth or sixth down the list in every consumer poll for home services, including carpet cleaning and maid services. Right. Very few people are so thrifty and so cheap that they just want the, the, the cheapest, even if it's the worst service they could ever get. They want value for their money and they want to know that they're spending it well. Right. If you care about like maybe your thing is electronics. And if I turned around and said, I bought an off brand TV to put in a spare room of our home out during Black Friday, I got a 65 inch TV for like under 250 bucks. There's some of you that be laughing right now. You've just I've just made you chuckle. Oh, my God, you didn't buy the I don't even know the Sonos, blah, blah, blah. At four grand, you should see my TV. I don't care, right? I am not the TV aficionado. It's a spare room. Now, if I watched a lot of movies, had friends over, we watched football games every Sunday, and I wanted like, you know, the big screen experience and surround sound and all of that kind of stuff, I would get educated on what's better. And I would start deciding what what value I would place on that. Would I spend six grand on a on the latest TV? No, because we know the price will be two grand in, in maybe a year or two when the technology comes down. But would I buy something two or three grand if it made sense and sounded worth it? Yeah, because that was the thing. Our customers think the same way, right? So the foundation helps you set that all up. So compelling sales proposition. Why you over everybody else? Not unique. A lot of people talk about your USP. Oh, what's well, you know unique? What's unique about you over everybody else? No, what's compelling, right? So you can call around all the competitors. You can look at all of their ads and lay out all the things they say about what they do. You know what you do differently. You know what you want to say differently, even if you know they do it, but they don't say it. You need to lay that. It's like cleaning your bedroom. You need to throw everything out on the floor and then start organizing it into 
piles and categories. Don't shove it in the corner or anything. Organize it and then decide what is compelling. What can I do? What do we do differently? What do we guarantee? What are our values? What do we promise? Right? Risk reversal guarantee is the next one. You need a guarantee so scary that it keeps you up at night for at least two or three nights. I always say this to everybody. Two or three nights after you come up with it or it's not not good enough. Right? You want your competitors to be scared of your guarantee. Why? Because if you do not deliver a great service for a client and they're unhappy, of course you're going to go back and reclean it. If they're still unhappy with you, of course you're going to give that customer the money back because salvaging that person's from going online and flaming you and telling everybody how bad you are is way more important. Quieting them down. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Couldn't help you. Oh, by the way, here, have the money back is so much better for business than having them tell everybody not to call you. The amount of work you will lose, the liability that you already have of making sure that you re that you you redo the job, give the money back is 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 so strong, especially in today's day and age with the internet and reviews and somebody doesn't write one review one place, they write it one place and copy and paste it 20 places, right? They can destroy your business. Customers have all of the control and they know it now, right? So the world has changed that way. Even before it used to be that at least the word had to get out word of mouth you know, around the neighborhood and it still would. Nowadays, gone, it's out and everybody knows it and it turns a bunch of other people away. So if you've got a risk reversal guarantee that is so strong that they go, how can I not try these guys, right? They might be a little bit more expensive, but holy crap, they must be amazing if they offer that guarantee, right? Founders origin story. People, even from brands, like I worked in franchise networks, um, Molly made franchises and chem drive franchises. And I've worked with franchisees, you know, around the world and sort of pro painter franchises and, you know, you name it, again, Belfours and all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, there's a founder story to that. That's why you bought the franchise. It's part of the reason why they tell you who the founder is and what they believe in and what they why they decided to do things differently. Why are you not doing that locally? Like when I worked in the franchises, hey, I bought into the Molly made because of this. Right? Here's why my wife and I did chose this made this decision and didn't choose something else. Here's where we came from. Here's our thoughts, right? You're an independent business owner. Why? Why did you start it? Why this community? Did you grow up here? Did you move here? Did you fall in love with it? Like, what is your founder story? You tell people that it resonates with them and you have an impactful brand message. That is your logos, your uniform, your van. It, it, it turns into the words that you use. All of it builds the entire rest of the blueprint. You start with the foundation. If you start somewhere later in this process and you don't have that yet, you're just making mud, right? Your website, we talked a little bit about being the hub um, and conversions. You tell that brand story, that brand message, that risk reversal guarantee right at the top. So now we figured it out. There it is right at the top before they even scroll down. They call it above the fold. Most people don't scroll mo more than once or twice. Everything you want to say that's the most important sits at the top. Your phone number, your logo. There's your, again, your, your, your brand messaging like we talked about, right? Oops, one more back. Your impactful brand messaging. It fits on the website. It's your colors. It's your logo. It's your words. It is why you over everybody else. It is meeting you like your founder story. There's the founder of the business right there in the right, right below the fold. And there's part of the story why he started the business and what he's going to do for you. Click here to learn the rest of it. You know, the number of clients or customers, like we, we track everything that happens on the websites we build, the number of people that actually go to the about us page because of the way the websites that we design are designed, right? I'll give you an example of it in a second, but um, yeah, like that's because you're telling a different message. The Facebook ads, we, we, we have what we call personal branding ads. Tell the story, tell the story. They work well in real estate. They work well in carpet cleaning. They work well in pressure washing. They work well. It's like, you know, hey, I'm the old guy in the picture. Here's me with my family out out on a vacation. Anyways, here, I started this business and I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. And if you're interested, where I'd really love you, you know, you can give us a try. And we have a bit of a VIP offer right now. You can do that if you need to. You don't even need to put the offer in there, but it's not a discount. It's like, you know, at our, you know, get a couple of rooms cleaned at a regular price and we'll throw in a free armchair because it's coming up to Father's Day. And we'll get dad's armchair, favorite armchair clean for free. About a $75 to $80 value, um, depending on the size of the armchair. Absolutely yours free just to try us out because, yeah. Yeah, we're here to help. That's a different story, right? So you want to tell your story. So does your website have authentic images? Does it speak to your ideal customer avatar? You know, 
oh, oh my god are you being pulled in 20 different directions you've got kids to run to dance class and gymnastics and blah 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 and all that kind of stuff and you know you also have to take care of the household and yeah husband does a great job cutting the grass and doing all that kind of stuff but the last thing he's interested in is how the house smells you care about what it, how it looks and smells because you got you know friends and family coming over yeah we get it we're here to help blah 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 right that you're telling the right story does it showcase your online reviews does it have video elements people pause on video elements it helps you rank but it helps you tell your story as well we don't have to be the next kim kardashian or kylie jenner and influence people we don't need to be the rock who has got an influence brand is tequila or i don't know what billion dollar business because of his you know he's an influence no 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 but we should be able to be able to pick up our phones and you know hey I, i'm carlos and I, I run, you know, um, best clean carpet cleaning. And I just thank you for popping by my website. I want to tell you a little bit of my business. And you can record that 50 times to get it right. But that's still better than not having it right. Um, right. Make it easier for them to take action everywhere they scroll. There should be a button to take action. Um, make sure you have your basics in order. All your calls to action. Leverage offers, not discounts offers. We train our clients on how to do offers properly, how to create a mafia offer offer. That's so, so good. They can't. Uh, um, they can't refuse if they're your ideal client. Um, make sure there's two-way chat and all that automation and leverage leverage all of that. So that when you land on a website, is it set up to convert? Do you have branding? Do you have colors? Do you have looks? Do you have opt-in? Like you got reviews streaming. Are you telling your risk reversal guarantee? Do you have ways for them to chat with you right now? Do you have, like again, a personal image of your company, your team, whatever, and the very first scroll, is it you, the owner, talking about why you started the business? Right. Have you got your website, the basic set up to convert? And then you got the automation in there. When somebody starts chatting and texting, does your phone ring when they fill out a form right away? And you can press one and click and talk to them through Carpet Cleaner Lead Pro. All of our client sites does. Do you have chat? So they want to do a two way text message. Right. And it's right to their cell phone tech. They don't have to sit on your website. It actually comes into their native SMS text. So from that point forward, you guys can have a chat. And if they turn out not to book, do you have automation set up to be texting them and emailing them? for the next year or two, right? Until they unsubscribe or buy, right? Because you're, t and what are you texting them? Oh, we got a great offer and deal. Absolutely not. Hey, we just solved this, this, this cat urine issue for this customer. Just thought you might be interested. Here's the story. That's what you follow up with them with, right? So you want to use the rule of three to transform your business. The rule of three is everywhere, right? You've got you, complex story ideas complex ideas, stories, everything broken down into three are more memorable. It's been proven by science, right? Um, there's basically in Latin, it basically is everything that comes from threes is perfect. We know that, you know, plays have three acts. Uh, matter has three states. Chess game has three phases. Sales, you know, offers three product type. You've offered, you know, McDonald's, you know, small, medium, large. If you guys don't have packages in your service business, you should have three separate packages for each one of your three separate packages for tile cleaning, three separate packages for upholstery cleaning, three separate packages for carpet cleaning, be able to, to, to provide those in threes. Threes work really, really well in our, in our, in, in our world. They're visually a great pattern. Um, people typically remember three, sometimes four things. They won't remember the fifth, right? So it's, it's pattern recognition. So did you know that you actually operate three businesses, right? You have a client attraction business. The blueprint breaks this down. You have a service delivery business and you have a client retention business. If you only run a service delivery business, you don't have enough clients you've attracted and you don't retain enough. If you only have a client attraction business and your service delivery sucks, you have no, and they're not going to retain anyways. And, and, and you're going to, you're going to run out of customers really, really soon. You have three separate businesses that need to be worked on independently at the same time. Rule of three. So before the sale, are you the best known cleaner? Are you building your lists? Everything you do in the client attraction business is about list building and then market the list relentlessly. Client attraction business is not, not, and write this down, not about just landing a job. It's not about a booking. Your whole job is to build lists of ideal people. And I'll, I'll actually show you what those lists actually be. You got to do grassroots 
grassroots outreach. We call it the hustle. We actually even have a hustle helpers package for people that aren't at a level yet. It's, it's a new package in our services to help them. You do the hustle. We'll do some training with you and coaching on the blueprint and all this stuff and on grassroots outreach. And we'll take care of the basics that you need started right now to build that brand, right? So that you start stacking and growing because there's a proven formula for that, right? Um, local referral partners, weekly outreach and, uh, and awareness campaigns, referral um, partner rewards, um, weekly commercial outreach and follow-ups as well. Neighborhood brand awareness. We talk about door hangers and postcards and um, yard signs and all that kind of stuff. Um, digital lead generation, SEO, Google Maps, Facebook, Google, you know, social media, all of it, and lead chase and nurture. All of that happens before the sale. During the sale, we think, oh, just gonna show them clean. That's, a lot of people think that, oh, heavens no. When you answer the phone, do you know how to influence the person who calls? Do you know how to sell by chat? when they don't want to talk on the phone, oops, which is most of the people nowadays. Can you influence them to get on the phone? And if not, can you influence them with visuals that say the same thing as you would have said with words? Hey, you know, hey, it's a great day here at ABC Carpet Cleaning. What information can I get for you today? Right, what information are you looking for? Right? You can even start, I know people, hey, it's a great day, blah, blah, blah. Um, can, can I have your name? Yeah, it's Sandy. Hey, Sandy, what information are you looking for today from us? Well, I'm actually, well, good question, actually. Changes the whole thought pattern. Just the words we use have power, right? So then, okay, great. And what research have you done on us so far? If you don't know that, how are you going to carry on the rest of the conversation? Oh, I just saw an ad versus, well, I got referred to you by this person. Then I went on your website. I watched some of your videos. I saw the founder. Well, I heard his whole story. It sounds amazing. That's awesome. So do you know about our this and that? Yeah, I know all about that too. Awesome. Okay. Tell me look what you're looking to get done. Right? Let's go a little bit deeper on those areas. You said three bedrooms. Blah, now you're off. Okay. Well, while I'm figuring out a price for you, let me tell you why most people who call do actually book us to clean their carpets. We offer the best cleaning, the best guarantees. What I mean by that is risk reversal guarantee, unique sale or compelling sales proposition. Boom, boom. You've already created those. We talked about it. Now you get to say them. Right? So what we don't do what everybody else does, what we do is what you do, right? And we've got our services divided in three separate packages. So you can pick whichever one makes the most sense to you. On the day of cleaning, our technician will do a full thorough pre-inspection. He will basically do a consultation and smile sweetly and you choose. You can ask any questions you want, but he's not selling you any. Then you pick which package makes the most sense to you. We make it easy for, for people, right? So I can't give you an exact price over the phone. I'm not going to quote you on the phone because we haven't seen the carpets yet. Anybody who does quote you on the phone is probably doing you a disservice. You're either overpaying or underpaying um, for what you've got. And if you're underpaying, they're rushing. And if you're overpaying, that doesn't make sense either. So we do it the right way. We give you an estimate, a range, and we come out and we give you a quote. Now, does a, Tuesday, does a morning or afternoon work best for you? Not, oh, how does that sound? Would you like to book? No, 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 no. Most people who call choose us to clean their carpets. So now I'm just asking you what day of the week, right? Call scripts make sense. We train on this as well because it's you have to know how to convert people and you have to know how to do it by chat. So your sales skills and your objection handling, you have to craft your, craft your quote visit for success. Some of these little things with TMs are part of the training that we do, right? Because you want to go and do, some people like to only show up and do a quote and never book over the phone. We did a hybrid. We did a bit of both, right? If we couldn't sell the job, we sold the quote. If we couldn't sell the quote, we sold the information. What's your name, address? Like we got all of that. What's the best email address? I'll send you over everything we talked about. So if you are calling around, you'll have all of our information handy and know what questions to ask. Yeah, I'd really like that. My email is, well, it's not like, oh, can I have your email? Well, I don't really give that out. No, you get it 99% of the time, right? Right. So how do you craft your remarkable in-home cleaning experience? If you can't, and I put re in, in red there because they, you want them to remark on it. It's remarkable because you want them to remark on it to other people, right? So that is not showing up with tongues hanging out and jeans and pants down around the knees and a hoodie on. And, you know, sure, might be a great technician, might be lovely, rusted old van dripping oil in the driveway, right? Maybe it's the cleanest, nicest van. Technician, hey, how's it going? Right at the door in front of Mrs. Jones. Who answers the door? Usually the housewife or their mother-in-law who's opening the door for us. Like those are all the people we know that, right? So you want to make sure that it's clean, professional, 
clipboard in hand. We always used to have a, a bag slung over our shoulder with other in, information or material in it and stuff like that. Um, rolling tape measure sticking out. We charged by the cleanable square footage, so we always measured, right? Take a giant step back. We trained the guys. We did role playing. Oh, I hate role playing. Yeah, front office. I'm going to pretend to be Mrs. Jones. You're going to be showing up for the job and you're going to knock on the door, ring the doorbell, and I'm going to open the door. Right? And we went through this. No, no. The, Giant step back and slightly turn on an angle. You're more imposing than, than Mrs. Jones is. You want have your business card ready and hand it over. Ask to be invited in. Well, may I come in? Mrs. Jones is like, yeah, that's where the carpets are. Of course you can come in. Start putting your booties on. Don't walk around in sweaty sock feet or your shoes from outside. All your shoes are fine. You're going to be cleaning it anyways. No, ma'am. No, I'm not dragging anything in from outside. In fact, we're going to roll out a carpet. Uh, we always used a red carpet. So we're going to roll out the red carpet for you. When you know, when I start bringing my equipment in, I have indoor shoes that I put on when I clean. Um, just don't want to trade the shoes right now. Um, just going to put these booties on and let's go take a look at what you what you need done. Right? Put Hand her a laminate, hand her something, put her in control, um, give her something tactile. And now put assumed control upon her as you ask your questions and do your dog and pony show. Have an experience that everybody's trained on. You will double and triple your sales and your revenue and the average value of a job just by learning that alone, right? So now you need less leads to hit your target number or you can grow your company faster, right? And you now know exactly which technicians you need to hire as well, right? You want to anchor your expertise. You want to, you know, start introducing feedback. So anchoring your expertise is the handouts and the package you leave at the end. Resell the job after you leave. Resell your company. Resell the good decision, right? You buyer's remorse. You have to start reselling the second you walk you bef before you even walk away. Um, you want to introduce feedback, not just reviews. Google reviews are great. You're asking for them to do you a favor. Feedback is you're asking for them to give their honest opinion to the boss or the office, not you. Feedback feels different. More people, like average number of reviews, people, 10% of the population gives reviews. 70% of the population will will write feedback if they're asked politely and correctly. So refer rewards, introduction, VIP club. You want to, you want to, during the, during the sale, after the sale, you want to build your fence. Every one of your customers is trying, like every single month you lose 10% of that relationship value. Every single month you're not in touch with your clients going forward. Your competitors are nipping at their heels. Their friends are getting in their ear. They're maybe, oh, I don't want you to hire a carpet cleaner. You know, the husband, honey, we can just rent a machine. I can do it myself, right? Who wants any of that? You want to start building your fence, right? So you want to sell the feedback, get them to give you feedback because it anchors the experience that they just had in the home. It reminds them and gets them to write it down. Why do we think journaling? Everybody talks about, oh, journal every single day. You'll you'll kind of get stuff off your head. It'll make you calmer, less stressed, and you'll remember stuff. As business owners, you know, have your phone and take voice notes, right? Anytime you're sort of you know providing your input and thoughts on something, it anchors it a lot deeper, right? Sell the referral, sell the repeat right? Talk to them right away about re-experiencing you and continue to resell that, right? Hey, that great experience you had, love to come back and do that again. Do you have any upholstery that needs clean? Do you have any area rugs? Do you have any towel? Go I'd really love to come back and just give you that experience again, right? You resell. That's your marketing. You're now marketing to your database, right? Service follow-up, follow-up for success, um, process. There's an exact science to this. Um, after service, next service upsell, Talked about that a bit. Um, referral request and the recipe for recovery, a very unique strategy that we taught how to turn people that are, you know, have a complaint, thought something should be done better, whatever, into the happiest people on, on the planet and not only love you better than your average customer does, but refer you to more people and stick around longer simply because they had a problem. If you do recovery right, if you have a recipe for your recovery and you do it right, it turns your the, the person that's a little unsure about the way things turned out into one of your biggest cheerleaders, right? You want to go ongoing customer nurture and retention, marketing, client quarterly check-ins and annual reminder marketing, seasonal promotion marketing, six month VIP package upsell marketing, lost client reactivation marketing. Are we seeing a theme here? You're a marketer of cleaning services, not a cleaner. Even if you're the only guy in the truck, right? So the power of three to fill in the gaps. Um, build your lists. We'll talk about this. We'll wrap up shortly. We're almost maybe just a little over. I need to try to go about a quarter after the hour. So let's. So we're almost done here. So, um, what marketing lists are you building and nurturing? Again, I said you're not buying customers. You're not buying leads. You're not buying one-offs. That's why Groupon never worked. 
the you bought a discount customer that's going to go find a discount service next time. And unless your price is lower than the other guy, you know, and you can't run a business being the lowest price guy, you can't build a sustainable business and you can't sell it for half a million, a million dollars in the middle of a pandemic, like somebody on this call, know, you, you know, did, um, you can't do that if you're the discount guy in town, if you're the best known cleaner at the perceived highest prices, we weren't, but everybody thought we were because of the way we marketed, right? Then you can, right? So you want to have a residential customer list. You want to have a commercial customer list. We decidedly realized we don't want 10, 20, 30, 40,000 square foot commercial buildings. You might be going, oh, John, you're crazy. Those are amazing. Till two, three, four o'clock in the morning, the technician has to get up the next day and do the residential or we take a day off because we took the night and now, no, no. We realized, I, we completely stopped quoting those. We realized that it took a while. Again, I'm not the smartest, you know, um, or sharpest tack in, in the pack. Like it took about 10 years to realize, you know what? I shouldn't be chasing these, these big commercial jobs. If we can't clean it during the day or at the end of the day, dentists, chiropractors, car lots, you know, you like places that shut down and we can go in and clean that didn't have to be a Saturday or a Sunday, didn't have to be at, you know, stupid o'clock at night. We don't want it. I can't hire technicians for that. Everybody's grumpy about it. It's a pain in the ass and the money's not worth it. And they only want the cheapest price. A dentist doesn't care. He's only got about the same square footage he's got his house, right? Yeah, I pay about 600 at my home. Yeah, that makes about sense. You go in at five, you're done at seven, 730, right? So um, you want to have... Um, you want you want to have your your customers d divided by service do you know all of the cl clients you have with pets who could use pet urine do you know all the clients that have hardwood floors if you do hardwood floor screening and recoding do you know all the clients that have tile and grout even if you're just called in to clean their chair their, their upholstery do you have your clients broken down by that are you sending a oh time to get your tile and grout clean to somebody whose whole house is hardwood and area rugs right have your lists property managers right? Why? Yeah, maybe you can do the hallways and the, all that kind of stuff, but you can also do the building and give them a kickback. And like, hey, we'd love, we your client, we we do two or three clients of ours are, are member are in, in your building. One of them sits on the board, you know, Sally Crothers. Um, we'd really love to give the building a bit of an offer, um, a value added offer. And for doing so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you back to your your coffers, your maintenance plan, whatever, 10% of what they, uh, what they give us is okay. If we, um, put a promotion around the building, right now, if you want us to do the hallways or do any of our service cleaning, we'll take that off the bill that, that, but otherwise we just give it to you, but thank you for letting us promote, right? Um, you want to have a, a lead list. You want leads that didn't turn into customers and you want that to be 10 times bigger than your customer list. You want to have referral partners and you want to be marketing these all the time. You want to every every single week reaching out to five or 10 potential referral partners with an ex a marketing package and exact scripts and words based on your compelling sales proposition, your risk reversal guarantee. Why should they refer you? Because nobody's ever going to have a problem with you because you're going to give all their money back if they don't, and you're going to reclean it again. And you're going to give them a dinner out at, at a steak restaurant if they're really that unhappy, right? Whatever it is, whatever you're, again, whatever keeps you up at night for two or three nights, you're getting close to being right. So you've got all of that and you've got a great brand and everywhere they look, it's amazing. A referral partner is going to be sure I'm going to, I'm going to choose you. So you got to have to have your list built out because if you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones eyes, you can sell jo Joe Jones what Joe Jones buys. I love that phrase because every one of those lists that I just mentioned have different buying criteria. They are a slightly different customer avatar. So you don't have one customer avatar. You have one for every one of your, your, your list. And again, you can't do this all. So you start with a plan, quarterly big rocks, divide it by the month. What can I get in place? How do, what do I do for the next? How do I break that down? You don't plan, you're winging it, right? So why should somebody choose you? Do business with you versus your competition? You need to know why. What benefits do you offer that your target customer avatar will resonate with? What can you add that's different? What do you offer that's different that becomes part of your compelling sales proposition, right? So you need to define your message. And if that's to a dentist and a dentist office, that can be a different benefit than to Mrs. Jones, right? So you wanna make every lead more valuable? Because inbound leads, 
the average person doesn't convert their inbound leads and most website form fills fail because most people don't follow up with them well enough, fast enough. When somebody fills out a form on your website, you still only have five minutes to get back to them or they start calling around or looking for something else. So five to 15 minutes, they could end up with the competition or just kind of think you don't care or it must just be a fly by night or eh, maybe it's just one guy. Yeah. Right. That's not the same thing as being best known and growing. Your average customer must be followed up with five to seven times inquiry before they become a customer, actually. Um, five to seven times. Right. It's no different than brand building. People need to see your brand five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 times before they start recognizing and trusting you. Right. So your ideal customer needs to see it that many times. The follow up needs to happen. A lot of people don't just book, they just don't. Right. When we listen to the calls, when somebody says, oh, I booked 70 percent of the calls. No, no, that's the, you book. 35 percent, 25 percent of the ones that that have, that weren't referred to you or heard from you, like 30 percent across the board. And that includes the repeats that are going to be should be 100 percent. So you're you're way down the list. Right. So but if you followed up with them five to seven times with the right messages in automation, especially um, you, you're going to get a lot of those deciding to choose you because you start educating them. Right. So you want to measure leverage marketing automation to do this. So you can follow up within the first two minutes by phone call, text, email, boom, 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 out the door, start a conversation and it's automated. Um, right. You want to automate follow up. So every prospect gets touched five, seven times. We, we, there's actually a formula for this. Um, Harvard came out with it's called the chase formula, like 20, 30 years ago. I don't even know where it came from, but, but it's for salesmen, how you chase, um, customers ethically over 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 that first two or three week window how many times you should touch them how many it feels like it feels like too much for the average person for the average business owner the average salesman whatever two or three times feels too much the customer's perspective was yeah i don't think he followed up a couple times and it was 17. it's their perspective and what you do is entirely different so you want to definitely have all of those in place and it's just simple math if you're booking about 30 percent across all of them and your average job is 325, right? You make about nine, 10 grand on 100 leads in a month. Take the exact same 100 leads, change nothing about your money, nothing about your marketing, nothing about anything, and just convert better. Convert better with better scripts, you're at 50%. Convert better with better follow up, you're at 70%. That exact same investment up here, exact same investment to get the leads, now brought you in $23,000 two and a half times more money in your pocket. And the only difference is you converted better, right? So it looks like this automation, part of Carpet Cleaner Lead Pro. You can ask us about it if you're interested, but um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of psychology involved in good automation, right? So you wanna build your plan. We're, we're wrapped up now, we're right on time, 3.15. So um, what are your takeaways? What did you learn? What are you gonna implement? What gaps are you gonna fill? Build your custom plan. You can go to our website and download a um, the um, carpet cleaner checklist, the internet marketing checklist. It's helpful for sure. Um, yeah, you want to start right off right now. What are your three internet marketing initiatives or marketing in general initiatives that you you need to implement to hit your 2024 goal? Do you know what your goal is? What are the three big hairy goal, big hairy things you need to implement to hit that goal? And then can you break those down into quarterly rocks? monthly to do's right so if you want to get the whole kit includes the checklist and all of that stuff you can go to carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash rewards it'll be a google drive where these files are available most you know view only or make copies different things like that depending on what if it's a pdf versus a, a worksheet um, but you can get all of that and start thinking through this process you can by all means ping us um, if you need any help um, keep an eye out for all the blueprint stuff coming out this year. We're really going to go back deep with this again. Um, again, it was something I did 10, 15 years ago. Um, and, and through, through that whole period of time and then kind of got into building other businesses and we just, I just stopped doing the blueprint training, um, got into a digital marketing agency and grew that. So, um, we're going back to start teaching our clients and if you select lucky people that are in the marketplace, um, Again, how to how to think through all of this, how to chunk it down. We've got a um, implementation course as well, teach you how to implement things slowly so you don't get overwhelmed, right? Um, all that kind of stuff. So all of that's 
um, part of our 2024 plan. How did it get there? I made a goal. I have a goal for the end of 2024 for me, my business, personally, um, all of it. And then I broke it down by quarterly rocks and monthly to do's. And I've got those lists and I run it. I'm we're, we're set, we're, we just started implementing a whole system called EOS entrepreneur operating system to do all of this kind of, kind of stuff in our company with all of our team members. Krisha that's on the call has just been introduced to EOS recently as well. On top of all this, the exact same stuff, but just another level of, of planning. So um, we call it our digital dominance method. All that stuff we talked about today that turns into that blueprint. Um, so the, our digital dominance method came out of the blueprint. It's the digital marketing pieces of it. Build your brand, build your authority, and then build your visibility. It all fits into that before the sale, during the sale, after the sale mentality, and how all of that delivering your client experience and all that kind of stuff is all part of it. So um, if you need help creating your larger than life appearance online to become the best known cleaner. Hop on my schedule. There's not a lot of openings. I think Krista said we're well into February. Um, I do podcasts and webinars and training and build a team and work with our clients and all of that kind of stuff. And we open up some time where you can hop on the schedule and have a chat. So uh, if there's something we can help you with, that would be great. But um, yeah, take a look at kind of what we've got available. And if if that if any of this resonates with you and you're looking to to take that next step, I've given you a ton of information. Go back to all of our podcasts and webinars, learn from all of those. Um, and yeah, and and just stay in touch. Let's 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 keep this going. There's again, as I said, let's pop the screen back here for a second. There is a blueprint. There's a workbook. There's training, there's some stuff I work on with, with coaching clients and stuff like that. There is a lots of stuff available to get you from where you are, get you unstuck, give you the ideal plan and start it moving forward so that you actually do get to the place you want to get to in a predictable manner. It'll do this like the sale, but you're moving in the right direction. So anyways, if that makes sense, I appreciate everybody jumping on the call today. Uh, yeah, if you if you got some value out of this, let us know. If you know any other cleaners that should be um, interested in this material, by all means, um, share the replay when it comes to you in a couple of days. Uh, once we bundle this all up, share our podcast, all of that. Let other people know about us as well, because again, we're here to change the industry. It's one of the things that I love talking to Jeff Cross at Clean Facts about and stuff like that is he's passionate about the industry. I'm passionate about the industry. Anything I've learned, I've given back for 25 years, 30 years, right? I learned something new. Oh, I learned it. I'm excited. And I, I teach somebody else, a friend, a colleague, eventually rooms full of people, now clients. So yeah, I love giving back. You can do the same thing. Just pay it forward, share it out, right? If you think somebody else is going to get some value from this, that's great. Really appreciate it. Thanks everybody for hopping on. And um, yeah, we'll catch up with you next time. Take care.